Thanks for joining me on another KL Tech Videos video. And today I've got a little bit of a special project that I absolutely love called Navidrome. Now, Navidrome is basically your self hosted version of YouTube Music, of Spotify. And it allows you to very easily host all of your music collection that you have and put it all together in your own music media server. Now, I do use MB uh, for my TV programs and my movies, but I've found it quite lacking, to be honest, with the music side of things. Um, <clears throat> and that's not a, a, a put downer or anything. That just means that they're focusing on something that they believe is, is a better part to focus their attention to. Navidrome, on the other hand, is what I would love to see some version of in, in MB. Um, but... For now, this project is really, really cool, and I'm going to show you how to do it. We're on the demo site right now, um, and as you can see, it's uh, got the recently added uh, list here. You can also hit uh, artists, songs, uh, you can even attach radios to this as well. And obviously, you can do a few other things like random, and if you've got favorites, and even playlists, which are really cool. Not to mention the fact that if you have multiple users, which it does support as well, uh, you can actually share this with your friends. There's themes on here. I personally love the Spotify-ish one. Um, and like I say, there's a good few options in here for you to play around with and share it out amongst your friends with your 100% copyright free music, obviously. Now, of course, you can have to bring your own content to Navidrome. It's not going to have everything there for you. Uh, but if we move over, this is the Navidrome website. This will give you a lot of information on the project and why it's really cool to host yourself. One of the other cool things I like about this is that it also uses the Subsonic API, which means you can download uh, Subtracks, for example, which is an application on Android, um, and it makes browsing and listening to your music a lot better than just using the Navidrome web interface. It's kind of almost like an app that just marries really well, and I'm going to show you all that later on in the video. Uh, as well. On the GitHub page, uh, you can see that it's been forked over 745 times. It has almost 10,000 stars uh, and it has actually 88 releases going as far back as January 27th, 2020. Now, I've been using this probably for the better half of about a year um, and I thought, you know what, this would be a really good idea for a video, especially for you home labbers out there that love hosting your own stuff. So with that said, uh, and having had a little look at the demo, um, let's check out exactly the features that we get here. So it can handle very large music collections. It streams virtually any audio format. Now, I'd say about 75% plus of my own collection is in the FLAC format, uh, because that's what I love to download in uh, and pair with a good uh, headphones and speakers that can utilize that format. Um, it's got... Um, you can read and use all your beautifully curated metadata, great support for compilations, multi-user support, which is something that the self-hosted community love en masse. We love our multi-user um, functionality. It's got very low resource usage, runs on multiple platforms. We're going to be deploying this on Docker today, so you could any of these systems that you're running Docker in. Um, automatically monitors your library for changes plus you can kind of schedule as well how frequently that occurs so if you don't want it kind of looking every couple hours you can do what i do i actually have this set to, to scan every 23 hours it's themable as i've shown you uh, and it's compatible with all subsonic madsonic and airsonic clients uh, you've got your transcoding on the fly and the documentation is really good it's fantastic documentation to deploy this but i'm going to make it easy for you today i'm going to make everything copy and pasteable and I'm just going to try and make this as quick as I can to get you hosting your own music server. So what we're going to do is this is the installing with Docker. I've created a Docker Compose that I'm going to put in the link in the description below. So just hit that link, copy, paste, amend for your needs and deploy. And it's simple as that. So if I'm going to jump down here to my notepad plus plus, we'll see that I have the Navidrome image here, the Compose file. 
Now you've got the standard port 4533. If you want to change this port because you have something running on it, as always, change the left hand side of the colon, but do not change the right hand side. This is the port accessed from your system and other devices. This is being accessed inside the container on the right. The environmental options, the schedule, how often you want this to scan your media files. Now, probably at the beginning, you might want to set this to like, I don't know, like an hour or something. So it gets a lot of the stuff in straight away. Um, but over time, you might not want it scraping your hard drive that often for, you know, long longevity. So you might want to set this to 23 hours, something like that. You decide. This is this is all about what you want. Uh, the log level I've set to info. I've never needed to change that. Don't have a base hill. Your music folder. Now, if we look down quickly to the volumes, you can see that I've got it in users, Keith, documents, Docker stuff, Navidrome data for the data side. And then underneath, I've got it Navidrome music for the music side. So the music folder is what's going to be accessed inside the container, which, as you can see down here, it's going to be read only because it doesn't need to make any amendments. It's not doing anything to those files other than just transcoding and, and using them. So um, I personally leave that as is. And if you want to change these volumes, obviously you're going to want to do that. Just change the left hand side for where your files are located. Where you want Navidrome to store its database will be the top line. The bottom line will be wherever your music collection is on your system. Now, obviously, if you're using Linux or something, you might want to change this to obviously forward slashes. Uh, and obviously on Windows, we're using back slashes. Now, uh, you've also got auto, auto import playlists as well. I actually haven't done anything with that, so I'm not too sure why that's set to true. Um, but I, I haven't used that for anything. Um, the login background um, environmental variable basically allows you to set a background image for your login page. Um, I've got that set to just a random picture of a kind of spacey type theme on uh, Imager. Um, you can create a welcome message. You can even specify your default theme here, but you you need to go on their website and look up the themes that they have to specify that environmental variable. And then, of course, the session timeout, which is basically how long someone can stay connected to the to your server before basically it kicks them off for not really doing anything with it. Restart unless stopped. Um, and that's pretty much it. From there, we can just select all, copy. We're going to head back to the uh, web browser. Uh, we use Dockage to deploy uh, our Compose files and ENV files on this channel. You, this is just an alternative to Portainer. You can actually just do the Docker Compose up if you like, or you can use Portainer or Dockage, whatever you want to do, but we are using uh, Dockage here. So we're going to hit Compose. We're going to select the default stuff in here, just paste over that. Um, Spotify, oh, yeah, it is out there. I'll make sure I correct that. Is that not quite? Ah, there we go. No idea why that was doing that, but I will make sure that this gets copied and pasted back in to the Compose file so that when you download this, you do not have the same issue. There we go. So that's in there. We don't have any ENVs to add to creating an ENV file, which is another thing I do like about Dockage. You can actually create your ENV file here. You can paste that contents down here. We're not using that. Uh, and we're literally just going to give the stack a name because it saves this for us for future use here. After that, it's simply just going to be deploy. And there we go. We're literally done. We're just going to watch the terminal spin everything up. It's going to be looking for the files and folders. We actually don't have any music in there just yet, but we will find something for that. And if we go to localhost uh, 4533, now everything is spun up correctly. You can either in Dockage, you can literally just click the port number here, or you can actually go into your address bar and put your IP or localhost or whatever you want to do, colon 4533. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create an administrator account. Create admin. And we are in. It's as simple as that. Now, as I said, I haven't actually got any music files stored in my music folder. Um, but that's basically what you would do. You would go into here, you'd go into your Docker stuff now, you're doing whatever you've, you've got your music files and all your music files would be in here. Now, if we jump back over to the Navidrome website as well under getting started, we'll see that after installing Navidrome, we can go to localhost 4533, which we've done. We'll create the admin account, which we've done. 
and then it just takes a couple of minutes for your music to start appearing in Average Rooms UI if it's there. Now, it does say that there is a note if you have any .m3u playlists in your music folder, they should be added as a playlist in Navidrome automatically. However, Navidrome does only does that when there is an admin user on a fresh installation. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now, there are quite a lot of environment variables that you can access, which will be on the Navidrome website under the configuration options link. I'll put this in the description below for you as well. And then there's obviously some advanced configuration that you can also employ as well. Now, generally, the setup that I have basically is the artist name. And then underneath that will be the uh, various tracks, singles and albums that the artist has in that order. Now, I actually use LiDAR to uh, pull uh, all that music uh, and compit and marry that up with uh, Zab NZB or Qubit Torrent. I do have videos in the description below, which I would definitely suggest you watch because that will show you how you can sort out your ARS apps, including LiDAR, and also uh, how you can get your Zab NZB uh, working as well and pair that up together to get uh, music in here. And then in the LiDAR, when you're doing the LiDAR setup, then you just obviously direct your root folder to the folder we just created now, which would be under Navidro Music. Simple as that, really. Now, with that said, um, the other thing you can do is get into the uh, users menu through the uh, top settings icon up here, where you can literally create your users, whether they're admins or not. You can then go into your personal for your own settings. And if you click on transcodings, you'll also see the transcodings commands and things like that here as well. Now, if we go on to the Play Store, uh, and we look for sub tracks and search. You will see right here that one with the purple uh, tape icon. We'll install this. This is the application that we're going to want to use to basically connect to our Navidrome server. Uh, and it's going to add a really cool interface. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually marry this up with what I'm actually going to do is connect this to the test uh, website, if possible. Um, so when that's downloaded, we're going to click open. We're going to allow notifications. Uh, one thing that I always like to do is make sure that the maximum uh, unlimited bit rates are set. So they have a lot of flack files. We're going to add server here uh, and we're literally going to go to uh, demo dot navidrome oops spell navidrome uh, dot org save if we go to home we will see all the demo uh, files are starting up and this really just adds a nice interface for all your music on your server um especially if you give your server like a domain name and then reverse proxy it using something like nginx proxy manager uh which i've got a, a video for as well which i'll also link in the description below for you so you can literally target that at the ip address of the machine that we drum is installed on and the port number and then basically connect that up through there too so you can expose it to the world but securely because it's got a login interface as well which is really cool uh, and that's pretty much all you've got to do there um for that so I hope that's been a really uh, good uh, interest of yours to see exactly what you can do here uh, and see all the different um, methods of, of basically getting this active. And I hope you've really enjoyed it. And if you have, please subscribe, please like. Um, and thank you very much for continuing to watch my videos here at KL Tech Videos. Thank you very much.